Hello, hello, this is Three Things You Need to Know. And today we're gonna to talk about the three things you need to know about credit. My name is Shelly Zavitz. I'm a licensed realtor in Portland, Oregon, and I'm here with Tammy Wittren of Guild Mortgage. How are you? I'm good, good to see you, my friend. Okay, we're talking credit. Before we do that, I just wanna say, if you're out there and you're feeling really weird about this topic, please know that you are so not alone. There are so many people that struggle with this or have to deal with it. So let's just get her done. All right, let's start at the beginning, Tammy. What is credit? Credit is how you pay your bills that you've signed up for. And the point of credit is you want good credit, not bad. Um, we as lenders are very concerned with credit, and we want to know that the um, debt that you've signed up for under contract that you are going to pay on time as promised. Okay. So everyone kind of has to have it if they want to get any kind of lending, right? Yes. So how it's does credit impact that? So when we uh, someone applies for a mortgage, we're looking for three things. We're looking for income, assets, and credit. So as you apply for credit with a credit card, student loans, home, car, et cetera, and you start to build your credit, it is captured by three bureaus. And those three bureaus are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. They are to give you a free credit report. In the mortgage industry, we mer merge them together with a specific credit report called the Tri-Merge Credit Report. And all lenders around the country use the same algorithm. And regardless of the company they're using to create the Tri-Merge Credit Report, we get the same um, information. And it would not differ really from if you get it pulled in Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine, it would be very similar. And the reason is Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, and Jumbo Lending have all agreed to use this model. So we want consistency. We want transparency. And the algorithm that we've used to build this model out shows um, the amount of debt someone has and how they manage it every month. So then I have a question. Um, you know those companies like like Good Karma, Good Karma, Credit Karma, good, Credit yes. Karma. <laughs> so you can tell what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those uh, like they're free, right? And and a lot of people use them to judge themselves. Yes. So do they use the same algorithm no. that you're talking? They do no. not. And they tend to be much more, they tend to be real good. Your credit score from any of the Discover, Bank of America, you know, any of those additional credit reporting um, models that you can pull by yourself tend to show your credit score much higher than what it will look like when your lender pulls a tri-merge credit report. So do not be um, surprised if you are looking at Credit Karma and your credit would say, in the 500s and all of a sudden it says 620 and you rush to your lender and they pull your credit and it's still in the 500s. It is very typical those credit uh, reporting companies that do credit for people are 20, 30 points below where a normal mortgage tri-merge shows up. Point number three, I was hoping to kind of touch on, we are not financial advisors and you should talk to your CPA and financial advisor, but what things could we suggest for people that maybe you help your clients with or buyers um, in the way of helping them better their credit score? Yeah, let's understand credit and the basics of it real quick, okay? okay. So credit is a... Um, ability to pay your debts on time as promised. If in the past you have had some trouble, I don't want you to despair. I don't want you to feel like it's hopeless. Credit takes some time to rebuild, but it can be rebuilt. But the first step is understanding what's showing on your credit report. I encourage you, if you want to get a home loan, the first step is talk to a lender and have that lender pull your credit. Allow them to do that. Now, when they pull your credit, they're going to get all three bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. And from there, they're going to see any old information. They're going to see that you, how many debts you have open, what you're paying, et cetera. And so then they can advise you, hey, you have a collection that's unpaid, that's reporting every month. We need to deal with that. Or for example, um, 
old student loan debt that maybe you, you missed a payment, but then say the following month, you know, like two months ago, maybe you missed a credit card payment and it might've been um, even say a $10 payment. It does not matter the size of the bill you miss. It matters that you missed a obligation. So credit for us is created by your habits to pay your bills on time as promised. So can I jump in? You just said, just so that I can nail this point down, it doesn't matter if it's $10 that you owe on a credit card or 700. Yeah. They, if you miss it, they, it's the same weight. Whack job on your credit. (laughs) (laughs) I could do it all. Now, and if you miss a mortgage payment, you know, it's death. If you don't pay your rent on time, it's, you know, these are significant problems. Remember, we want to lend you money and we want to make sure that you will pay us on time as promised. People who don't pay their bills or they're like, I had the money in the bank. What do you mean? You tend to have a habit of habitual disregard for rules and credit. And we need to just break you of that and bring you up to speed with, if you want a loan, you must demonstrate that you take your credit seriously and you pay your bills on time as promised. Stuff stays on your credit report for 10 years. Just because it falls off doesn't mean that debt goes away. It's not reported, but they can then get a hold of old records and pull it back up. Right. What about people who don't have credit at all? Well, then we can do a manual credit, but we're going to pull cell phone bills, rent bills, everything like that and build a credit report. So you, you need credit, even if you have to go to the bank and establish a secured credit card, which is you have a savings account with maybe a thousand, 2000 in it, and that credit card's attached to it. And you start to create credit that way. That's a great way. Get tires. Here's the thing. You need to pay your debts on time as promised. Now, if you have a lot of debt and you're maxed out on your debt, that is a problem too. We want to see that you're not maxing yourself out. So if you have talked to a lender and you're like, I have paid my bills on time, but I still don't have very good credit or you know, high 700 credit scores, that is because the amount of credit that you're available to pull on, like a credit card, say you have a $5,000 balance, you then are keeping a $5,000 balance on that credit. And what that says to us or the algorithm, that model is that you are maxed out. I see. So a simple fix is call that creditor, get that line amount increased, and you want to keep about 25 to 30, 40, 50% available credit, always just sitting there unaccessed. Thank you so much for coming today. I appreciate you so much. You're always a wealth of knowledge. Good day. See you next week. See you next week.